if you're feeling hungry and you like to uh, eat lunch uh, halfway through the day, uh, <laughs> do give us a call on double one double two double three. Uh, and we'd love to hear your stories. One time I was hungry. Uh, it was actually mid-afternoon. We're just a couple of business anchors. Welcome to the Business Anchors Podcast. This jingle is slightly too long. This jingle is slightly too long. Welcome to episode 30 of the Business Anchors Podcast, the show where two business owners discuss the weird world of business. And today we're delving deep into the failures and struggles we've learned the most from in our business, hoping it'll make you laugh and maybe even save your business. Double whammy. Uh, I punched the mic during that <laughs> I intro. Noticed that. Other, we... other podcasts <laughs> would re-record that. We're not going to. No. <laughs> You know, we're just authentic. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, so that was actually my wedding ring that time on... Uh, yeah, so that's you, one of the biggest struggles, isn't it, in the business? Us both mm, punching the mic when we're doing a podcast. Yes, uh, it seems only in the last few episodes we have a real habit of punching our mics. <laughs> um, which is terrible for a podcast. Yeah. Um, I'm really... I think this is going to turn out to be a really good chat. Good, hopefully. I do, I genuinely I do. Mean, I mean, I hope so for the listeners. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think there's a few challenges that... I think will be interesting to hear about and also help overcome this help be valuable and interesting yeah i think it's that thing of like talking about rubbish things that have happened to our business and then oh and then it was all right because we did this yeah it's like people will face these challenges in the future and hopefully and not know yet yeah and then go oh yeah well i heard this is and this is the good thing yeah. to do and then they'll go oh my god dan mm. lloyd is so good mm. and we'll all feel great yeah so tell um, me about what one of your biggest struggles or challenges or how, um, how you, do you want to shape it? Do you know we, we don't do you know, know what, what we're going to say, do we? One thing, each other. Uh, I'll, I'll keep it fairly generic. Okay. I'm not involved with anyone that's involved with the business now. Okay. But something I really struggle with in our business is um, when we've trusted someone mm. and they've gone against our trust. As in you've struggled to deal with that in your mind? Or yes, you've st- yeah, yeah. So, so initially, um, when we worked with someone who we trusted and then uh, s- stuff happened and realised we couldn't trust them. And, oh, I really want to know um, what that is now. <laughs> I, it's something that made it hard for me over the next... To trust other people? few months yeah because then i thought like oh i i just i genuinely trust everyone at at the start Mm. i trust everyone unless i'm given a reason not to trust someone that i meet so it made me kind of question myself for quite a long time after and i and getting quite a negative space of oh wow if someone's not being honest with me yeah then how how do i know anyone else yeah yeah who you can trust how do i know other people aren't um Mm. and and I, it made me feel that's interesting because i i think I'd go, I'd go the opposite way and i'd put that person into a into a separate box and go okay well they're not trustworthy mm. but that doesn't mean someone else isn't mm. going to be trustworthy i also it, it just it was it it ate me up inside uh, Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. um yeah kind of with that with that person and i think what i've I suppose what we said about is learning from these yeah, things well, and how because this is in business it's like a lot of industries as well it's like dog eat dog with mm. um, competitors and, and people within your own you know you, yeah. if you're an employee listening it's like your colleagues or whatever trying to get one up on you and yeah. going to your boss behind your back and going yeah they might let up a bit but uh, I don't think I've that's done this like, that's quite a generalisation are you saying in some situations yeah I'm saying it, oh, okay. it's, it's, it's something that happens in, bus- right, in the yeah, world yeah. of business sometimes yeah. obviously you'd hope only in businesses that have a very bad culture and stuff but yeah, that, that it can happens yeah. in there's some industries it's you know in like um finance and law and journalism i think they're dog industries dog, yeah. where it's very mm. you're basically trying to climb the ladder so you pull everyone, everyone off else, yeah, yeah chuck everyone off the ladder so they can fall to their death mm. but um yeah what i l- have learned and what i i learned from that situation is even looking uh, at that exact situation putting myself in the other person's shoes that um that kind of i felt went against the trust i had in that person we're trying to be empathetic yeah that where they were using empathy and it's actually like when you put yourself in that person's shoes and you genuinely do you get to a point where you're like i am them my life is their life yeah uh i don't know the things i don't know all the other stuff going on 
nearly all the time because yeah. people very rarely do things just to be a nasty person it's like that thing of if you're in traffic and someone's like hooting and like uh, ang- um, yeah we called? mentioned this previously um, didn't we with um road rage road rage that's it you don't know if like they've had a bereavement or something yeah. terrible's happened to them if so you, you genuinely forget your emotions that are linked with it and think like oh actually something might to say um i'll use an example that isn't this example because i can't talk about it mm. so this is completely different mm. but say like we would have work, wanted to work with a partner uh, that's another agency and we had this good faith between us and yeah. stuff and then they so went behind, gone behind back our back to, to like take one of our clients right or whatever. yeah i think if you're if you look into that i think most of the time you're kind of if you get into it it might be like actually they're their business we realize is failing they have to sack all they're, their they're, stuff. they don't they don't want to act like that but they're in such a mm. desperate position that they're they're making bad decisions Still doesn't make like it right that. though no no it doesn't make it, it right like- but it makes you be able to kind of feel like oh they're they're in that situation that's why they've done it they're not doing it just because they hate being me an <laughs> and they're being they're they're trying to be a complete asshole to me mm. it's like they're in this tough situation they've mm. made a bad choice but you can see what could have led them there. And it then makes you feel more at peace with, okay, it's not just, it's not like the world's against me and I should never Mm. trust other people. I guess, how do you remember, I I guess isn't like a lesson learned, something people can action. How do you remember to do do that? Just just try and think about this next time something annoys you or upsets you. Try and think, oh, how are they feeling? If ever you feel like trust is broken between you and someone else in business or, well, well, I suppose in life in general. Mm. um, Put yourself in their shoes yeah do your best to like literally go so far as to imagine you are them in such detail and what they may be going through can i share one example mm. of a recent podcast i listened to where this was a really extreme example of that okay yeah the diary of a ceo steve bart this podcast i always talk about he interviewed recently a guy on there who tells the story of um he would thought he was in a happy relationship with his mm. wife and he's got kids and stuff and he got home one day and his wife just told him that um he's she like she's had an affair and stuff mm. and he talks through just punch the mic again for God. We, he talks through um which i found so impressive mm. how he actually forgave her and his his mental process of understanding and it just it, it, when you listen to that the steps he went mm. through it's amazing to realize how someone can be that sort of strong to take a step back of a really emotional situation mm. and then actually go through a process to overcome that kind of mm. trauma i think it's a big thing in in relationships um you know even relationships like that like your partners or whatever mm. even if there's small things that goes on in your relationship and you kind of you have a discussion where like one or both sides aren't happy about something if you if you are able to take a step back yeah and take the emotion you're feeling out of it and put yourself Giant. in a completely neutral situation as well as yeah. theirs if you're honest with you, well, when I do this, if yeah. I'm honest with myself, a lot of the time, it, I come to a point where I'm like, mm, I understand why Gym my wife, paradox. yeah, why my wife might not be happy with that. Because actually, looking back, I've done these things mm. that I haven't really thought about, but that would make me feel. What is your chimp, like Lloyd? Hmm? What is your chimp? What is my chimp? Yeah. <laughs> Are you all right? <laughs> <laughs> I know the chimp paradox, the book. Yeah, I can't, I can't. But what do you mean by what is my chimp? Oh, wait, do you not remember that? You read, you read it and told me. I read me it about a long it. time ago. Oh, I can't remember. the book where it says that different parts of your brain, oh, you've got a chimp part, which is your emotion. As in, you part. wanted me to explain that. Yeah, yeah, I just thought oh, it was interesting. Okay, yeah. I mean, we've discussed this on the oh, podcast okay. previously as well, but the chimp paradox. So the chimp is your emotional reaction, usually comes first. So my wife says, really not happy that you keep uh, putting this touch. on the floor and I'm tripping over it this is a real and my, issue isn't it my chimp <laughs> my chimp's like well i'm not happy that you're doing this rubbish thing and that's just my emotional thing of like yeah. oh I'm tr- well i think it's something that you're not doing yeah um when you step Whereas back a logical thing a is, logical thing oh, of, yeah that's probably quite yeah, annoying that would constantly. be rubbish for her when she trips over that yeah. all the time you because you always tend to put your clothes in the corner of the room and she hates it doesn't she that is just this is just an example <laughs> it's all uh um yeah. but yeah sorry i thought that was yeah. interesting yeah Okay, yeah, so okay, that's cool. trust and how I think that was an issue in our... Yeah. yeah. Uh, what about you, Dan? What? I think one of the one of the biggest challenges for me has been being consumed by social media and screen time. Mm-hmm. I think even to this day, I think it's still a challenge. The first thing I do when I wake up is reply to comments on our social accounts. The mm-hmm. last thing I do before I go to bed is do the same. Mm-hmm. And throughout the day, I constantly do it. Um, 
but that's not any it's not any weird pressure I put on myself I think I've just con conditioned myself to do it and I think I need to be more proactive in making myself not do that as much hmm. but it's it's that it's that weird thing that it it's uh what's the thing the serotonin stuff that it releases when you dopamine. get dopamine when you it's like a vicious circle of oh, i just punched the mic again <laughs> it's a vicious circle of um you know engaging online and people saying nice things and it encourage, encourages you to do it more mm. so i think one of the biggest challenges i face is yeah is that is spending too much time on my phone and a big part of that is because that's part of our whole job sort of social media and things so yeah i think how, how i am trying to overcome it is by becoming aware that it's a, an issue mm. by looking at my screen time mm. and being worried by it and then so do you think that the reason this is a big issue for us and our kind of business because it how it affects you if you know what i mean like affects you as a person no i think it's not me as a person i think it's how it potentially affects my family because i'm on my phone i'm completely yeah. happy doing it Oh, so, so sorry. So I was coming at this like thinking uh, struggles in business and how we've overcome them. But you're actually thinking as a business owner that this something is, to do with this our is business. something painful that uh, relates to actually your family life that yeah. you wouldn't want to fall into. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Mm. But that's one of the things I'm aware of. And Yeah. Nice. Give me another challenge, Lloyd. Uh, I think... Uh, uh, let me do a like a... I was going to say a boring one. <laughs> oh, that's not a good way <laughs> to Lloyd, start. you really haven't no, no, got no. this whole Sorry, podcasting I mean, marketing <laughs> thing, have you? I mean like a an operational type thing in then. business. That's so like, not one. like, oh, emotions involved and stuff. Yeah. But it's like Go on. something. So basically... This is where everyone switches off. Yeah. yeah. Uh, fast forward five minutes. <laughs> basically dealing with people not paying yeah. your business. So uh, if this hasn't happened to you yet, it will if yeah. you continue in business. Um you can as good as your business is and a lovely people you work with at some point someone will just disappear and try not to pay you um you're right you're smiling at me no because i thought you were going to tell the story of <laughs> where we we thought we were doing really well and then we looked in the bank oh <laughs> yeah that, that was part of it like me and dan just used to look our main kind of thing we looked at was profit um which was based on what we'd invoiced yeah not money in the bank what we invoiced <laughs> and our costs so it, i mean it makes sense it's like oh we've this money we've invoiced that's going to yeah. come to us had some great and this money we spent we? so oh we made this pro so yeah we got to a point where we're like profits grow the good we did so well oh there's no money in the bank <laughs> um and yeah an issue that that was an issue with mm. kind of procedures financial stuff mm. um to actually chase people up to pay us yeah. but i mean we so, so why it's been a struggle and there's been a couple of things uh, in the past where people haven't paid for various reasons um, and we've done our job and it's kind of like well this is this is rubbish and mm. I think that's another thing I said emotions don't come into it but when you run a business or when you've worked hard on something even you know if you're the employee in the business mm. um, and then for whatever reason that work isn't paid for yeah it kind of makes you feel like angry like upset you're, you're like it's kind of like worthless like well well i've put all this work into something and someone doesn't value it yeah. enough to um and so it can be quite a negative thing hanging over you mm. and certainly as a business owner and kind of my position if someone's not paying or not paid it's something every day you know it's kind of like that thing on the list of like oh yeah and i still need to work out what to do with that because mm. they haven't paid um but the things that the, this is the the boring things to learn from it yeah yeah go on um it's basically um be even if you're uh what's the the cool word these days solopreneur right basically uh you work on band. your own yeah um don't think oh i'm just a small business i don't need written agreements or mm. contracts and things like that like we in reality we don't call ours contracts because I don't know if they would hold up in a court of law, mm. but we always have written agreements where basically we uh, say what we're going to do for the client and we also lay out expectations for, for them. them. Mm -hmm. What do we need them to do to successfully do our job? Mm. Um, because we don't have control of that, so we need to make sure that mm. they, they agree to that. Um, and then we 
we ask them to sign it before we start working with them and that that has prevented so many issues because if you if you set out their things they need to do as well mm. um if they're like we're not paying because we you haven't done this um it's kind of you can you then can say the evidence well, in, of, in our agreement you know these four in these things emails, in these phone you said calls. you'd do you haven't done those which hasn't allowed us to do what we've agreed to do mm. for you um you're in a very good position and that has helped us get paid mm. by someone who didn't want to pay us in the past yeah um and what was the other thing about that payment processing and stuff that's something uh, that i know you yes yeah yeah just the processes of chasing up payments I mean, what did we used to do we used to like not much do <laughs> do work and then at the end of the month so we, if, if we, if we finished a project on the january 2nd we do all our invoicing on the 30th of january so we complete a big project january 2nd wait till the 30th then invoice it with a 30 day payment. payment period so if they paid on time sometimes we'd 60. get paid three or four months after we'd started mm. a project mm. um which just doesn't make sense for a business and mm. cash and stuff so just having things in place like oh no we we will invoice as soon as the project's completed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we're going to ask for payment in 15 days mm. we're going to chase it up on the 15th day to make sure they haven't forgotten it what's that tip you spoke about before where you you kind of share the data of if someone isn't paying you say you know 95 percent of oh, our clients yeah. pay yeah. on time and you're in the five percent that doesn't so please can you pay on time yeah it, it's just it's a bit of a tactic really but um, something that does normally get things paid is mm. if you genuinely look at who pays on time. Yeah. So if it is ninety percent of your clients pay on time, and they're in the there's one that doesn't group, like kind of pointing that out quite mm. often makes people feel like, oh god, I'm I'm one of the rubbish ones. I didn't realise. Yeah. So just having a note at the end of your invoice, standard invoice, mm. or if you're chasing something, oh oh ninety percent of our payments, our clients pay on time. So please do what you can yeah. to to yeah. pay on time. Mm. Um. But I think with this finance stuff in business, what I've learned is that these boring like procedures and uh, these operational financy things that help you be in a good place mm. actually allow you to enjoy running a business so much more or enjoy growing yeah. a business because less stress. If you don't it? have those things in place, yes, it so yes, it will take you some time to set up these things, but once they're set up and working it mm. means you can do the good stuff yeah you don't have to be chasing yeah. stuff and and dealing with grievances of people mm. that oh it wasn't clear what i was paying for mm. i don't you know mm. and i think people don't see it like that. they just think oh that's a boring thing do i really want to spend my time doing that, that? is so worthwhile but that, it allows you to enjoy mm. the good stuff basically yeah yeah interesting mm. cool yeah you got anything anything else um one other thing for me mm. i think just analyzing myself is I have, I've had a challenge in the past with tunnel vision mm. with when I have a certain task and this was a real thing in the early days when the, we were building the website because there was so much it was a real time suck and took loads mm. of time up when I've got something I need to focus on if it's not complete I really struggle to focus on anything else mm -hmm. so I'm like something else more important could come up but because I haven't completed this one thing yeah. I feel really rubbish and I can't focus on the other mm. activity so I think that's something I've but Again, in terms of learning from that, I think being self-aware of these types of challenges mm. and then think and then knowing that, you know, you've had to constantly reinforce this to me because mm. I've spent days doing something that's uh, not a good mm. use of my time and you've told me and it's having that p reinforcement of... Yeah. Yeah, that's a really random challenge I've got. I think that self-awareness, going back to the previous episode, Gary, Gary V, we didn't talk about self-awareness. Mm. Um, that's a great one, by the way, self-awareness. <laughs> mm. But I think being aware, trying to look at yourself and things that may be weaknesses, not just... Because I think it's quite easy for us as people to realise we have a weakness, but ignore it because it's not nice to think about. Mm. So if something like that's happening and you're thinking, this probably isn't the best thing for me to be doing, yeah. don't just go, uh, well, I'll just <laughs> forget about it and keep doing it. Yeah. Um, being aware, looking at what you're doing, analysing it yeah. and making changes. Yeah. Yeah really you got any more challenges yes go on i then. certainly have um so dealing with uh troughs <laughs> oh okay um, so as in business income over time mm. you've got peaks and troughs mm. so no one just has a steady line a straight line going this is how much money's mm. coming in the business and if they tell you that there's, they're lying yeah there's ups and downs ups and downs so the challenge of running a business 
when you have ups and downs is other than the emotional roller coaster of mm. what's going on. So you have either your own time or lots of employees' time and your team. And if you go in, you have these peaks of, oh my God, we've got so much work going on and so much money flowing into the business, yeah. so much profit. This is great. It's party. We're all busy. Let's do all this stuff. We need extra help. And then you go into a period, uh, which we, we've had fairly recently, actually, a bit of a trough mm. in our wiggly line. Mm. And then you, you've got sort of, you haven't got all that work. You haven't got all that money flowing in freely mm. to the business. Mm. You've got to be a bit more careful. Um, and I think as a business owner, that's really challenging, um, you know, tra- to manage your stress levels of, well, hang on, it was we had three times the income last month and now we've got this. Mm. Is something going wrong? Is this all failing? What yeah. do I need to do? Oh my God, yeah. what do, should I be doing yeah. more? Should I be... Um, Changing what we're doing completely. Yeah. And I know I know, because you're um, kind of head of sales and marketing in our business, Dan, I know you, you uh, have struggled with this feeling a lot of, mm. you're thinking, oh, well, I'm not getting the sales I need to, so I've, I'm not feeling good about this, mm. which I suppose is something you have to have to strive to do uh, more yeah but you don't want to get to a point where you're stressed about it and stuff and no i don't think i've being honest i don't think i've i've rarely felt stressed and really rubbish Mm. i think what i have felt is more pressure sometimes Mm. when there's less of a the pipeline's less full compared you know because we we, Mm. like we mentioned we've got these lead indicators to know how many unconverted deals do we need in our pipeline to be hitting up our forecasted sales yeah. targets and if i'm not hitting those numbers which i haven't in the past yeah then it's more pressure on me like wow i need to be putting more time in mm. and i do and then we overcome it but it's the that kind of stop gap of mm. oh you know not looking good at the moment but do, do you know why i don't i think it's not stressful for us and rubbish because of, of uh, things we do yeah go on and things we've developed over time so um I have a something I feel strongly about in business, which is your income isn't your income. So again, I think mainly with smaller businesses, but a lot of businesses have a bank account and they get paid money in a month. And it's like, that's their current wow, account. Wow, loads of money this month. And like, that's your, your money to spend. Yeah. Oh, I'll get, I'll get yeah. a new uh, so if you have So if you have peaks and troughs, in the peaks, if you're, if you're like that in business, um, you know, you take a lot, uh, you've got that money out of the business and you're like, oh, do you know what? Mm. You just go back home, you're all happy with yourself, say to your wife, yeah, I think we should book a holiday. Mm. And actually, I think we can afford that car that we wanted to get. Yeah. It's like, oh, this is great. But when you get to a trough and, you, you haven't got and you've the- got, you know, you've made a loss or you've made a very small profit and you've you got no them. money, mm. you're then in this a really, really, good point. really stressed situation. So I've all, uh, I always try and think that your income isn't your income. Yeah. So separate the money coming into the business to the money you, you have as your a business salary. owner personally at all. It's a completely I different thing. The interesting thing is I when we convert a, a significant deal in the business, mm. I for the last few years I've never thought, oh, that's more money in our pocket at all. Mm. Like I just don't you don't think yeah. like that. I that's not impacting our the salary really, is it? We haven't got stressed in our most recent trough is because we, when we had peaks, we're building up the money within the business to make up for those troughs. And I think it sounds so simple when you say it, and it's like it's allowed me to be stress-free when we've been quieter, which is way more valuable than having yeah. A, a lot new of car. business owners have these stresses of, oh, at the end of the month, how am I going to pay our staff? Yeah, you know, all the, like genuinely month to month, that's you know every other month might be the yeah. thing. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to have enough money in the bank. Maybe I have to put some more money from my personal account into the business yeah. to to pay this guy's but wages because they've taken out and in I the think peaks a lot of businesses were like that and that's such a a horrible place to be and I would hate to to do that so I just think it sounds simple but not many people do it especially the smaller businesses and it's you've got to separate the business mm. income to what you think about as your I think people undervalue not being stressed yeah and and the comparison of having new nice things mm. to not being stressed and mm. i've had this in the past where i've thought about getting flashy cars mm. you know partly on finance and things mm. and thought oh yeah that'd be really cool because i could afford that pain each month but then i thought mm. but then i wouldn't be in as comfortable position to not and that that not having that stress is amazing priceless it's priceless <laughs> it's literally priceless isn't it yeah. not coming to work well we obviously have stresses yeah but that's an additional stress you don't want mm. and i'd pay a lot of money not to have that stress yeah and we do because we don't take it out of the bank yeah <laughs> yeah 
Yeah. I know we talked about that for a while, but I think that's such a key, especially businesses sort of one to 10 people that the owner does kind of have control of, oh yeah, I'm going to take this out. Mm. Oh, I'm going to rather, I know in big corporate, if you're like got a big corporation, it's going to be much more mm. structured of how you uh, earn money out of the business. But I just know so many people that work on their own that don't separate it and then have these stresses and struggles yeah. for years and years that I've known them. And I think it could you could take all that stress away because i don't think yeah <laughs> looking at it you, I'm, you haven't been really stressed no about this no because i know because we've done what we need to to set ourselves up for what the quieter times yeah and you know in the future maybe we will have stresses mm. maybe we will struggle more but mm. i feel comfortable now six years in that when we've gone through a couple of quieter times especially you know with the pandemic we've mm. It's been more unpredictable yeah we've had bigger peaks and bigger troughs than we've ever had before yeah. basically yeah um it's just great yeah. that we've we've done that i feel proud of us then yeah i thought yeah. that was interesting pressing that mic somehow Lloyd, so turn it down for that. i feel proud of us dan good so uh yeah i think we've done a good job there pat on the back pat on your back pat on your head well done <laughs> lots of pats Go um on. i'm happy to wrap it up yeah there, i think we've up. we've saved everyone's businesses mm. Uh, I want some lunch and I want to go for times. a walk. So I'm really hungry. Um, <laughs> so if you're hungry, listen to the podcast. Uh, let us know. <laughs> oh, I nearly went radio DJ then. We haven't had radio <laughs> oh, DJ for a long time. DJ in, a in a while. <laughs> well, yeah, for a while. So if, if you're feeling hungry and you like to uh, eat lunch uh, halfway through the day, uh, <laughs> do give us a call on double one double two double three. Uh, and we'd love to hear your stories one time I was hungry uh, it was actually <laughs> mid-afternoon and I thought this doesn't fit nicely into a meal time so I had an afternoon snack uh, if you like afternoon snacks do let us know on the text double eight double one double nine thanks uh, goodbye from me and it's goodbye from <laughs> Dan Blakey <laughs>